Hello, and welcome to All in Motion. I'm your host, Jake. Happy New Year to everybody. We made it. 22. This is episode 11, eSports Gaming. My next guest has a passion for many different things, but his most passion is definitely eSports. Ladies and gentlemen, Didi Odyssey. Didi, good to see you, man. Yeah, you too. It's been a minute. It's a pleasure to be on the All in Motion podcast finally, Jacob. So I really uh, appreciate I'm it. Glad you had me on. I know, hey, hey man. Honestly, you and I were speaking today earlier, and, and uh, I remember we were driving to uh, pick up some food, and, and I remember you. I really want to appreciate seriously what you said about you're like you're doing it because I remember we were talking about uh, someone that uh, I was speaking about on a on a a, a platform for. Uh, you know, social media, but more from networking. You mm-hmm. remember I spoke about that? And mm-hmm. I was telling you that they were speaking about me, and I, w- I turned it off because, remember, I was just focusing on these in Philadelphia I'm in, in these different parts of Pennsylvania. I'm just focused on that, right? Right. And you gave me some – no, seriously, you gave me some really good feedback. You're like, dude, you're doing it. Yeah, I think for me that's – And the then even though I'm not monetizing yet, and you really gave me good – you great. It, it, yeah, it's not perfect, but you're still consistent on launching, you know – if it's every Thursday in terms of uh, doing an IG live, mm-hmm. and the next day you drop and publish an episode. Yeah, I mean, for me, the definition of success is actually taking action and doing what you you know intend on doing. So for me, you you're doing that, and you're like you're like walking through the process of actually you know creating content, and you know you have like a you have like a whole team behind you, and you're like learning. It's a learning curve, right? You're getting better. You, you you take feedback and you try to make it better all the time. So yeah. Right. So before we get going on the topic, can you can you uh can you tell us who you are and where you're from? Um so originally I'm Nigerian. I, I came to the States in two thousand and six for college. I did um I studied accounting and finance and then I um started my career at Ernst and Young. And currently, I work for a consultant firm, um, CFGI, in uh, like a finance transformation sort of role. And right now, I'm just like glad to be on the podcast. Pleasure to be talking to you. Ernst & Young. Can yes, you sir. give the audience a little bit of info? What, who, who is Ernst & Young? Because <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't they trust Fair me. enough. So Ernst & Young is a, is a public accounting professional services company. They're part of like the big four alongside Deloitte, Pricewater, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and KPMG. KPMG. So, I like what we yeah. said at the same time, KPMG. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's awesome. uh, it, it was like why uh, did they say the big four? Do you think? Um, well, it used to be the big eight before. So back in I think two thousand one or two thousand two. I'm not like a history major, but there was a huge scandal in corporate America. The Enron scandal, and like the. Uh, Auditors at the time, Arthur Anderson, got into some hot soup. So following that scandal and lots of regulations, there was then um, like consolidations between all these regional accounting firms. So there was a, and I learned financial accounting. What was that? What was that? Uh, what was that actual? Uh, what was the name of that? The practice got put in place. The name of the what? what when when it happened initially with uh, with. Uh, Enron. That. There was actual. What's the name? I, I can't remember now. Since financial accounting, there was a practice that. Oh, there were. I think the main issue. F- no, but there was a practice that got put in place that the oh, accounting yeah. practice, a new accounting practice. Got it. They, they they created the PCAOB, which was like a watchdog that kind of like, sort of like monitors the big four companies to make right. sure that they're actually doing the right thing. Because during the Enron scandal, I mean, Arthur Anderson partners were actually caught you know, shredding papers with maybe the Enron executives and shit just to hide information because they were overstating their revenues and hiding losses in all these subsidiary accounts. So, okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for your context. I believe the audience can understand what, mm-hmm. what's going on there. So, uh, you, you came to the States at what age? I was 17 at the time. 17. And I'm going to say congratulations because you just got your citizenship how long ago? <laughs> uh, I think it was two years. Two three years ago. Well, congratulations, seriously. Yeah, thank you. Because everything that's going on, I think, gives the audience a little bit of context and understanding. You know, a lot of us are here in the states. You know, I'm uh, people in the uh, served in the military a little different than we went over. Uh, you know, and I have a, a, a good friend of mine that he actually, you know, he joined and he didn't 
become a citizen until you join the U.S. military. So it's pretty cool, and mm -hmm. I, I I respect the fact that, and that everyone should as a U.S. citizen that had to go through the process, because yeah. people, some people were born that didn't have to go through what you get, what you went through. Right. Yeah. And it was a it was a process. Yeah, it's a long process, but you know, finally made it. Great to be Nigerian American. It's good to be dual citizenship. So. So thank you for the introduction. Let's just get right into it. What we're here for okay. this topic specifically. EA Sports. Mm. Give a background, what it means to you, and then we'll get right into it. So, and how you even got into it. I mean, I, before we really get into it, I, in America, we call it the education for the people in the States and outside. In America, we call it soccer, but the 80, 90% of the rest of the world calls it football. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's very important to decipher. Right. Because so unfortunately, most people are like, it's not football, football in the NFL. You know, so right. you be careful sometimes. And, you know, people so are like, no, I guess is your question esports or is it? No, it like is soccer. E it's like, esports. Oh, sorry. But I'm just making the, the audience understand the, the distinction. Mm -hmm. yeah. In America, we call soccer soccer football. outside of the United States. It's football. It's what called football. Yeah. So and, I, and I'm saying some Americans that might not understand that. Mm -hmm. That's why I just want to make the distinction. Yep. Before we get into EA Sports and what you do, and uh, that makes sense. I, I guess I'll just start with football, right? Or soccer. So I, I played soccer, football when I was back in Nigeria growing up. In I grew up in a city in the southeastern part of Nigeria called Aba. So I played street football out there. And obviously, when I came to the States, I still played in college. I played in undergrad before, well, not undergrad, grad school at USC before I dropped out. And I still play now. I'm working professionally. You know, I join all the leagues uh, that are like in the city that I'm living in. When I was in Virginia, I participated in the FXA league. And now here I'm, I'm in Philadelphia. I'm playing in the Heyday Athletics League. So I've always played soccer since my since I was a kid. And then for esports, pretty much the same thing. I mean, as I played soccer back home, I also used to play video games. So I played a lot of um like. The game I used to play when I was growing up was called Winnie Eleven, which is Pro Evolution now. But at the moment, I play FIFA and I go to FIFA tournaments and I like, compete. And I've hosted a few um, live and online tournaments. But for the most part, I just want to exist in the esports scene just because I find it very mentally stimulating. And um, it's, uh, I mean, you can see Facebook is changing up to like metaverse trying to um take advantage of like the gamification of like most things in life so i just enjoy video games fifa and i have a startup that is like geared towards having like an esports team that's going to be competing in fifa formula one and fortnite as well there's a lot of like other different video games that are like very popular but like my focus is just those three FIFA, Formula One, and oh, that's awesome, man. Um, so, what really piqued your interest in terms of wanting to really get into uh, EA Sports and the gaming whole industry? Because it's actually very interesting. the The market really is not in the states; it's like over in Asia and in other parts of the world. Um, I think I was just interested in it because I watched soccer. I played soccer, and playing soccer virtually was just the next um, natural step, right? And at the time when I was back in Nigeria, there were no like formal tournaments or anything. But when I came to the States, when I was actually in college, actually I was a, I think I was a freshman or sophomore at the time. This was in 2008. I competed in this tournament, FIFA Interactive World Cup, FIFA 08, and I actually finished first in the on the leaderboards for the North American um, region, and I qualified for the tournament in Berlin. And I was supposed to go, but that's a whole lot of story. But I believe I was the first Nigerian to actually qualify for like an eSports World Cup FIFA tournament back then, and I was in college. And explain to the audience, because what you said is, <laughs> they were like, what the hell is this guy talking about? No, I mean, to, I, I, we get it, but yeah. can you break it down a little bit, like what that what you're doing? Like so you're, uh, video games, right? So the video game, they had a tournament. It was actually a $20,000. Because in the States, it's not big. Tournament. That's why we want, this is a great episode, but we want to make sure that everyone it's getting baseline. bigger. I mean, you can see the Fort, like Fortnite tournament prizes right. are like a million dollars. There's other games like League of Legends, Dota, yeah, 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 yeah. Counter Strike that have significant, you know, tournament prize winnings. So, 
FIFA is sort of lagging behind in terms of like how much you can potentially make, but it's a it's still like a, a great sport for me. So I enjoy playing it, and that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, and how I think you mentioned it. how long you've been doing this? Since I would I would say ninety eight. I think nineteen ninety eight was the year I sort of like got into actually enjoying football, watching football, and you know actually playing when I was little because. Um, France 98 occurred, right? France won the World Cup that year. And I really got into football for the first time during that World Cup. And then my dad, at the time, he came back from the States and he, he bought us like a PlayStation 1 and I had FIFA 98 on there. So my brother and I, we always used to play France versus Brazil every time, like throughout the vacation period when we were little, we would ju- we'd just play France versus Brazil. I was always beating him because he wasn't so good, but yeah. You beat him. Of course. <laughs> Guy, yo. No humility with you, right? I'm kidding. I'm, I mean, just, I'm just giving you. I'm just I mean, my it. brother is interested in Formula One. He's like. Yeah, no, we, we know. Yeah, we so, talked about that. Yeah, he, so he, he likes the Formula One so a he's, lot. So he's like part of like the startup incubator that we're trying to create with the esports team where he's going to sort of like head the Formula One side of it. And I'll do FIFA because that's what I know. And then we'll figure out someone for Fortnite. So. If anyone out there in the audience is like, well, we just talked to a lady the other day about incubators. Incubator, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I and, and I, I like the fact that she was she's a amazing woman, mm-hmm. and she does. Uh, she was just speaking about you know startups, right? And yeah. how they call them incubators. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, they refer, they refer. Correct me if I'm wrong. Today they more refer to them as startups, right, than incubators. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, startups, incu- like it's incu- an incubator is almost like a program where you go and maybe you meet other like entrepreneurs and they're working on something and you share resources, you get advice, you meet people, you Cause, network. Cause she, well, so. I didn't ask her the question mm. and, you know, we, we had a great interview. I didn't ask her the question for the audience to go into what it, could you explain a little bit incubator and startup? I know it's way off topic, it's but it's the same, same thing. thing. I mean, but could yeah. you, can you shed context? I mean, a startup is the entity, right? The right. entity that has either goods or services, and they are going into an incubator to sort of maybe get funding or to network or to just like take advantage of, uh, take advantage of resources, like almost like open, open what do they call it, open source communication. Well, it's right? venture capital type of stuff. Yeah, right? exactly. They're, they're, you have access to yeah, those sort of people as well. Yeah, you're, you're trying to build right. capital. Exactly. Exactly. So. Whole concept, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so when you you've traveled to some of these places, uh, when you travel to these events, which is this new, I mean, you and I have spoke offline about it, but when you travel to like New York and you travel to places, what's that? What's that? I mean, I'm happy. Like you're playing video games, exactly. And it's like I said, you like the the last time I went to a tournament was in New York. I took a train from like a, the Amtrak train from Philly to New York, and it was just what about two hours train ride. Got there. It was a thousand dollar at stake, essentially. So that's what gets me so, um, I guess, motivated, motivated about it because I'm having fun. And then sometimes it's like prize winning involved, but for the most part, I'm just having fun, right? Because I'm playing it. I watch the EPL. I support Arsenal, and I play soccer in real life as well. So it's just everything all comes together. It's almost like when I play FIFA, it reinforces what's good practice in a soccer field and when I go out there in a soccer field I sort of like replicate what I think should be done and it just it just works out well it's a symbiotic sort of relationship for me and my next point is about the markets why do you think certain things the US is sometimes nothing wrong with it like slow to catch on because I mean like cryptocurrency other things like that like it, it seems like the US c- is catching on you know later does that make sense in terms of like EA Sports? You go to you know Asia, or different markets. Mm-hmm. We you're speaking about it's it's a market's huge. I mean, I've done the research. Like it's, it's the U.S. is just catching. You know, they, you go to you do go to them in the states, but it's not like even Africa and Asia and Europe and South America. It's the markets are huge there for the, what you're speaking about. Yeah, I mean, what do you think? Why do you think it's 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 finally catching on in the states? I just think maybe. Um, China is way ahead just because they're way ahead on a few things technologically wise, right? So, but I mean, I think the last time I, I was reading something where they're, they're going to cut down the number of hours that kids are going to be exposed to like playing video games. So maybe that might change things 
like geographically in terms of like esports viewership and you know revenue where where the money's coming from but i think the u.s is right up there i mean they have Fortnite tournaments that's a lot of money formula one has esports series like tournaments that also has like significant prize winnings and like sponsorship pub- publisher fees and media rights so i don't i don't necessarily think that um the u.s is lagging behind it's just more china has like a more outsized you know impact in in what they are doing there but i think the u.s is fine you think so yeah 100 percent sure okay yeah no, I'm, just I mean, asking, I'm just asking yeah. there's like esports teams in the u.s cloud 9 gg there's like phase clan and hopefully and, mine and Savage audi- is only no but, but we'll no, get there the audience some of them have no idea what you're talking about well, yeah, I mean, you never know. I'm sure there are people no, out people there that, are, that might know these <sighs> entities and or teams. Or, yeah, I'm pretty sure there, there's a lot of people who actually know things. About, yeah, maybe you don't, but there's people out there. Not me. I didn't, I didn't. I'm just saying <laughs> I'm trying to educate everyone I can every day. Fair enough. I mean, they'll, they, they'll they hear something different, right? And not just the states. People might not even know outside of the states they might listen to this. That, that's why we just want to make sure that Fair they enough. understand. Yeah. The, that's right. The, they, they under, make, I, I, I try to break everything I do mm-hmm. in every episode. I try to break it down so that every person, be it their yep. demographic, age, mm-hmm. culture, ethnicity, they understand what the you know overall what we're trying to do and understand a, a basic yeah, understanding. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. And that's why I, if I ask you questions, it's just for, yeah, you know, that's, that's all. Yeah. yeah, so so it leads me right into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you go to the tournaments, does it get do you feel uh, intimidated or is there ever pressure or is there ever, you know, when you look at some people, like, oh my gosh, this is the, like a gamer. Like, you know what I mean? Like, or does it get competitive before you even actually, because you're competing on video games, correct? Mm-hmm. Did you, is it like, it's like going, it's like so many people play in Las Vegas against like really big, they call them high rollers, right? Yep. They come in with a million, three million dollars. Yep. I'm sure there's guys like you go to some of these tournaments that are like, they're well known throughout the states or outside that really are good at gaming. Yeah. Are they there? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think... I'm, I'm asking the right question? Yeah, I mean, I'm, you're yeah. right, yeah, yeah. The, the tournament I went to in New York is actually hosted by is OS New York, NYC. New York, is New York or New York City? New York City, New York. Manhattan? In Manhattan. Okay. In, in lower Manhattan. I'm not, yeah, yeah, OS NYC. And anytime those guys host a tournament, all the best like FIFA gamers in the U.S., at least in the East Coast, they oh, all show okay. up. They okay. all show up because I've seen them a number of times and they're pretty good. They always almost win it. I've gotten to the quarterfinals, semifinals a few times. So break it down to the people. Then how does it work when they break it down like that? Like when, like any competition, but like what do, what do they do in terms of breaking it down? Like how do you win? Like what do you like? You're, there's a hundred people. Let's but, say. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just basic, but I'm I'm asking so we can have context. Mm-hmm. You are competing. How does it get breaking down? Then you beat those people. It's just like a like a, a chart, right? Like, right, right. Yeah. So like, okay. So the last tournament, like I said, it's a knockout tournament, right? There could be, let's say, there's seventy two players. Anybody, like whatever round you're in, if you beat the person or you lose, you're out. So it's just one game. You only have ninety minutes in virtual FIFA time to either win or lose. So if you lose, you're out. Right. So yeah, it's a knockout tournament. Wow. Essentially. Yeah. Wow. But like like you said, those the best players they are typically there, and yeah, there's a pressure, and I wouldn't say intimidated. I'm usually just very excited to be there because I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Because I was when I was growing up back in Nigeria, I used to, I imagined in my mind that, hey, I'm playing this stuff. My mom and my dad, they were like, th- sometimes they'll seize my game. They'll be like, hey, go study a book. Don't don't just play video games. But I could see that it's like you can make competition off of it and this there could be potential for big money in it monetizing so, yeah exactly so i always knew like it's just like sports right so I, I was just like passionate about it so anytime in those tournaments i'm just like i'm just happy there's really no pressure i would like to win but for the most part i'm just having fun right that's awesome yeah so any plans for the, we're going we're going to, to we're, uh, close it off here in a minute I know you're, you're very busy, man. Last few questions. Anything that you have coming up before the prior, the end of the year, in terms of the tournaments, or how could and, and also how can people? We'll get. Well, I thought, we'll summarize at the end. Guess if the audience wants to know how to reach you or uh, reach out. But how does someone get involved with this? 
involved in esports. Yeah, they're playing these kind of like, in these comp- these tournaments. I think it all depends on what. Yeah, it all depends on what like. I guess the genre of video game that you're interested in. If you're interested in FIFA, then you look for FIFA tournaments. But there's so many di- games, right? There's League of Legends, there's Call of Duty, there's Dota, there's Counter Strike. So it all depends on the genre, and then you just have to look for this tournament. But if you're trying to get involved with sort of like the startup that I have in an incubator program called Savages Only Esports, I think you can just find me on IG at dd.otc. And I think my two startups, both my consultant and tax practice and the esports scene, they are both like linked to my profile. So you can always get in touch with me. Wow. There it was. You answered my last few questions, but look, I don't have to ask you that. What's that? Well, I was going to ask you how people reach you. You just answered it. Yeah, dd.otc. You find me. We'll, we'll I have like an account in and we'll do tax it, practice. And we'll do it when we launch the episode. We'll put there, if you're cool with it, we'll oh, yeah, put yeah, the information I'll, on there. Well, I'll, I'll send yeah. it to you. Yeah, yeah we'll absolutely. Get it. Um, wow, man, video games, you make money now. <laughs> yeah, you do. You don't even have to work anymore. Just play video games. <laughs> Get on Crazy. Twitch. And that's all. <laughs> what would you say to young people today? Um, that want to get into something not just young people but people regardless of it how would you advise because this is the big thing we do all in motion right? we're all mm-hmm. everybody knows we're all in motion we're always moving but the idea the goal of this podcast is to educate spread awareness mm-hmm. obviously big thing is mental health and things of that nature but someone like yourself you you went through it you made it we're, we're close we're cool how would you tell someone younger or someone coming up like, hey, listen, they want to get involved in someone like pl- doing what you do? How would you advise? I think I think for the most part, what I would say is not to lose like sort of like your playful side, because that side is always what there's always something in that side, the playful side that's like that's got all the intuition. So whatever it is that you could be interested in and you're passionate and you don't have to like no one tells you hey, go do this, like, school or classes or exams or or sometimes even our 9 to 5 work, right? The, like, they send you work or project. If it comes internally, like, whatever you find exciting and that just sort of, like, motivates you without anyone telling you to do it, that's sort of what you need to put your 100% in. And I think you never know. The sky's the limit. Wow. And, and then it's the last thing. Really amazing. <laughs> no, it's it, the... Uh, what we want to know is the fact is you have bad days like we all do. Your bad day, what do you do for you to come out of that bad day? Hmm. It's a uh, question I pose to everybody now. It's a new, it's a new thing. To be honest, I, I guess just in general for, for me to de-stress or to like take my mind off maybe having a bad day, the easiest thing for me to do is usually go take it out on someone on FIFA, go play FIFA seasons and win someone or just, you know, go play FIFA, right? Or I just kind of like catch up with like Arsenal podcast or I listen to All Emotion podcast. Thank you. All Emotion, <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> and just do something else different, you know, read the Wall Street Journal. Like I really enjoy reading WSJ. So like just put my mind into something different that's not what's frustrating me. That's all. Right. Is there uh, anything you want to anything you want to close on? I think that's it. I mean, I just want to say I'm a certified public accountant with a passion for esports and FIFA gaming. So if you want to get in touch with me, just find yeah. me on Instagram at dd.otc, and you know we can get cracking. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> well, Didi, thank, thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. And Jake. We'll, we'll put all your information out there, like you asked us to, and people can definitely it. contact your tax business and. You, is it e- e- A or eSports? eSports. E-sports. So electronic sports. Okay. E-sports. You got it right. All Finally. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you again, Didi, for stopping by All Motion and educating our audience on eSports. Amazing. Please be sure to follow All in Motion podcast on Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify. You can also follow all content episodes at Linktree at All Motion podcast. This is Jake again. Take care. Happy New Year.